This is the story of how my stupidity led to risking my entire poker channel. Holy shit, that was fucking cool! Today's $10,000 challenge brings me to a casino that I don't visit all that often. I will happily admit that this casino is by far and away the most beautiful property in Southern California in the Los Angeles area. All that to be said, I don't get paid enough money to be glazing them, so I'm gonna leave it at that. In this very first hand of note, I look down at Ace King of Diamonds after a couple of limps to me. I make it a cool $30 to go, and we get no less than 40 frickin' collars. I don't know how you're gonna win a pot when you have an unpaired hand, five ways to a flop, there's 150 in there, ready to be claimed. Yeah, Jack 5-3 with two diamonds, that, that might be a flop that works. I don't... <sighs> With how things are going, there is, I mean, there's no way. There's no way I fold. I don't, I don't care what happens. They can all go all in back to back to back to back. I don't give a, f I don't give a sh nothing. I'm going with this hand. They check it over to me. Okay, well, pff, step one's out of the way. I make it $40 to go. <clears throat> Everyone folds. Yeah. I mean, I did only have a drawing hand, but I got to get a $10,000, guys. Somebody's got to give me some fucking action, please. I deserve it. I'm dunking it up so hard. Under the gun makes it $25 to go. He hasn't been raising too much here, so when the action's on me in the cutoff, I'm a little hesitant about what to do with this hand, but I make the call with King Queen. We're off to a flop heads up. That's pretty much as good as it's gonna get for a hand like this. King Queen 5 Rainbow. Absolutely nothing to worry about, so my action, so when my opponent bets 35, Kind of in a little bit of a medium spot here. We can obviously raise, but I feel like springing the trap on a later street makes the most sense, considering how dry this board is. I make the call, and the turn card comes E3. Once again, not changing much here. There is a full rainbow out there, but this time my opponent checks. Obviously not great. I want my opponent to do the bidding for me, and maybe lay the trap on him. Spring the trap, I should say, on the river, but looks like I'm going to have to do my own betting. I make it 65, and luckily for me, he still makes the call. To the river card we go, which comes out the four. And when the action checks over to me, this is where I decide to go for a larger bet of $175. In my head, I feel like if my opponent happened to have a hand like ace king or ace queen, he's just not too likely to fold. People look at me, see this nose ring that I've put on recently, by the way, and they just think, hey, this little hole has nothing. I don't, I don't believe him. I, at least that's what it's felt like to this point. Seven episodes in, I don't think I've got a bluff through, it feels like. Yeah, this gentleman's not falling for it. He's a little too sharp. He makes the fold, and at least we win that pot. Poker can be so easy. A player limps, and I decide to isolate him to $25 after I look down at the beautiful pocket tens. The big blind decides to come along, and so does the limper. We've got a three-way action situation brewing, and the flop comes out queen high. In a spot like this, when the action checks to me, although I'm three ways, there is a good chance I still have the best hand, and I can be betting to deny my opponents the right of some equity. I make it $35 to go and only the big blind calls. Turn cards of six, bringing in some of the obvious straight draws, but I do double block some straight draws that I'm worried about. So when the action checks to me, I'm not too worried about it, but there is a backdoor flush to consider. I check it back. Pot controlling sem seems like the right idea. And especially when the river card comes out the five of spades, putting a four liner out there, Luckily for me, my opponent just checks it, and I obviously check it back fairly quickly. He flashes a 7, we show our pocket 10s, and we are good. Good day, everyone. It's an absolute pleasure to see you folks here today. My cousin Close to Broke had mentioned that you folks really enjoyed meeting Fall from Rich in the last mid-session update. Your favorite Euro has some even more wonderful news. Close to Broke has notified me that if you folks would like to see a special episode where I come in for one of the $10,000 challenges, he has given me the green light. Only if you folks get this very video to 1,000 likes. It's a big toll to ask, but for me, Mr. Far From Rich, I think it's bloody worth it. But until then, you've got to click the like button. Subscribe and comment down below and let Close to Broke know we won't let him down. Fall from Rich to the rescue. At this point, we are batting a perfect three for three, and we continue to get blessed in ways that we can't even believe. Pocket Hurons. Pocket Cowboys from early position. I make it $20 to go. Middle position, a very interesting OMC type player, as well as another OMC type player from the small blind call. 
or going to a flop that comes out 8-6-6 with two spades. Pretty wet board texture, especially for the two player types that I'm going against here. I throw out a bet for $40 to go. Pretty big one, I will say. I'm looking to target all the flush draws and pairs that my opponents can have. And then the first OMC raises to 0140. As you guys have seen in the past, I have been training to fight with and against the OMC. Put myself through a rigorous training program that only Rocky could rival. At this point, sure, my opponent can have a 6 in his hand, but what's more than likely with the $600 behind is that he has a big draw or a pair that he's unwilling to get rid of. One thing you'll find out later on about this opponent is that he can go pretty crazy with some hands that you wouldn't expect. So, all that to be said, I didn't get this far to quit. I go all in for $600 effective, or $740 I should say, I do have my opponent covered. And he thinks about it for quite some time. When I fade the snap call, I obviously know I'm good here. And now all I can think about is holding. My opponent obviously is going to call me off with a flush draw or maybe even a hand like a naked eight, which we're doing really well against. But after a pretty long tank, our opponent ends up holding. Definitely something we needed. Definitely the momentum that could change this entire series. In this following hand, I come across one of the most dangerous things in poker. Not one, but two OMCs, and I'm smack dab in the middle of them. The button limps when there's a straddle out there. I'm in the small blind with the Octo Crab, shout out to Cairo, and the straddle checks his option. OMC in the straddle, OMC in the button, what the hell can go wrong? When the flop comes out 8 to 7, 10 rainbow, the action ends up checking through. When the turn card comes the eight or queen of hearts, I should say, bringing a backdoor flush draw, seems like none of these guys really care too much about this pot. Seems like nobody's got a pair and I'm gonna go for it. I throw out a bet for 15 and yeah, they're not having it. They just both call. The river card comes out the three here, giving us bottom pair. At this point, I know better than to just start blasting off here. I just, you know, wave the white flag, call it a day, shake my head and check. Somehow they both check it back. And everyone's just sitting there and I'm just like, yeah, I got bottom pair and and <laughs> I mean this hand history is almost just unreal. I show my bottom pair and it's good. I mean what the what's going on guys? How do I have the best hand? <laughs> this is the funniest hand I think I've ever put on the vlog. Yeah, I realized that last pot wasn't that big, but I I mean, if you guys got a laugh out of that, let me know in the comment section down below what the weirdest hand you've ever won ever. Have you ever bluffed and got called by a worse hand? That is one of the funniest feelings in poker. Anyways, this entire session has culminated into the following hand, which I promise you is one of the sickest hands you'll see in this entire series. I look down at the ladies. I make it $20. Middle position OMC from the last hand decides to make the call and we're heads up to a flop that comes out Jack 10 deuce with two hearts and a club. At this point, I decide that I'm not going to go away from what I know is right. My opponent has just not been able to get away from any of his big pair holdings, so I decide to lay the trap. I decide to check it over and he decides to bet. Easy game. Makes it $25 to go. I'm like, hey brother, knock knock. And he's like, yo, what's going on, young man? I'm like, what's up, buddy? I'm raising you. He's like, but to how much? And I'm like, $80 much. He's like, yeah, no problem, pal. Snappity snap call. I'm like, let's go. Turn cards a seven of spades. Don't love that card. Obvious straight draw comes in, but I don't think my opponent's the old betting the eight nine here getting raised and just snappity snippity calling it that's what i'm thinking i could be wrong but that's just what i feel like i bet 100 and he literally spits in my face while throwing 300 dollars at me at the same time can i be totally honest with you guys my guy here is exuding confidence he's not bluffing i promise that much he's not bluffing he thinks he has the best hand. Whether he does or doesn't, we may never find out, but he is exuding confidence. The problem now becomes is I don't really beat anything that should feel this great about their hand. Like a naked jack? Really? That's that's how we feel? Probably not, right? 
it feels like a set or eight nine at minimum <sighs> i start tanking i'm not gonna lie I, i'm lost i don't know what to do I, I i can't pretend like i know what the right answer is but i go all in for his last 220 remaining which is effectively 520 dollar all in and he pretty much quickly makes the call the river comes out a brick we show our pocket queens and he shows ace jack holy crap he th he felt like he had the best hand and i promise you brother if you ever watch this video you're gonna have the, the best hand against me in that spot nine out of ten times this time you didn't and that's okay that was awesome what a fucking session we're kind of in this fun place where I'm starting to enjoy poker again. And I think I'm just mostly enjoying like this. The content is so much fun. Like, look. Back to the point, guys. I'm getting off track because I'm so excited about content again. Today was a good day. It was a great day. Why, you may ask? Because we won. But outside of that, I'm enjoying poker again. In the space of poker, you're either you're a man or a woman of your word, or you're kind of like, fuck, I mean, for lack of better terms. And luckily for me, I'm, I'm gonna fall on the first one. I'm a man of my word. And I promise you guys, and I swear to you guys this, if I don't complete this challenge, it's over. I'm not gonna post anymore. I'm just gonna quit poker. I, I guarantee that much. I, I, I'm not lying at all. That's how confident I'm in this. But my confidence has also started off as just brute cockiness. It's just absolute stupidity. So they're calling me for my in and out I am vegetarian. So you're like, why the hell are you eating in and out I'm actually just getting something for the missus. So anyways, that's it for me. Love you guys all. Updated bankrolls right here. Have a nice day. It's too easy. Too. It's too easy. I can do this with my eyes closed. It's too easy. Too. It's too easy. I can do this with my eyes closed. My eyes